I think uh, we were talking about uh, sounds, um, and words that are uh, spelt the same. And and um, let's take a. Okay, those two are spelt the same, right? Psi, psi without the diacritical mark, diacritic mark, and psi, psi with a guttural sound above the S. A dot. So one one is the rice, and the other one is the onion. Okay. One of the other ones is he. <coughs> One one without uh, he could be used for a female uh, gender ending for questioning. When you ask a question, you say he. And then um, also a uh, lot of people refer to uh, antlers, um, horns as he. Okay? And the one with a dot above the H is he. Is mountains, uh, where there's a lot of trees, rough high, high hills, um, and so, so we're going to um, probably study more about our um, diacritic marks. <clears throat> and so, um, on here, it talks about uh, certain Lakota words are not found in the English language, thus complicating the process of representing Lakota with the Roman alphabet. Okay? These sounds are represented by a regular consonant written with a diacritic, a mark accompanying a letter and indicating a sound value <coughs> different from that of the same letter when unmarked. English also has unique sounds, okay? But instead of using diacritics, it uses letter combinations, okay? For example, compare how sounds change when combined with the letter H. Pool, number one, pool. And then when you add a PH, it becomes phone, okay? In English, one must memorize how a combination of letters create a sound different from the letter by itself. In Lakota, one must memorize how a consonant with a diacritic represents a sound different from the consonant by itself. <clears throat> Many of these sounds at first seem difficult for the non-speaker. Some linguistics ex explain which tongue and mouth position is needed to make certain sounds. This type of physical explanation will not be used. Instead, we will learn the Lakota language as any child learned to speak by listening and mimicking the sounds 
she or he hears. Okay. It says useful terminology, okay? Although there are other linguistics who are more specific, I will teach the, the general terms most commonly used among Lakota teachers in the region of South Dakota, okay? Ejective plus glottal stop, okay? This term re refers to short explosive sound ejects that are ejectives that are followed by a quick closing and opening of the throat, glottal stop, to sound, to learn the sounds, you must listen and mimic it. A consonant in this category will be marked with an apostrophe next to it, as in C-O-C-O, -O, okay, the comma, or H, so that first one would be Cho Cho, right? Cho Cho, right at near the bottom here. And then there's a word with a, a guttural mark above the H and, and a glottal stop, the comma, like, okay? And it's ah he, ah he, ah he. See how it chops off the H sound and into the A N. Ah he, ah he. And the the K with a glottal stop and a U N. Okay, and the P, P with a glottal stop with a O is what? There you go, O, O, okay, very good, O. And so what's the next word? The S with a glottal stop, sh -a. S -a. S -a. S -a. Yeah, excuse the first one. That's that's another one of those words that that uh, has two words with um, without the glottal stop or guttural. Ah, okay. And the next one is s -e. S -e, right on s -e. And then the last one is eh. Eh. Okay. Very good. Guttural sound resembles someone clearing their throat. Okay. Eh. Eh. Okay. The scratching noise comes from the roof of the mouth. Okay, remember it is the most important, important to listen to the sound and mimic it. The following underlined letters represent guttural sounds. Okay, H, W, A with a guttural H mean or says what? Hua. Hua. Very good. Hua. Hua. And the next one, G I with a guttural above the G. Ri. 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 Is that a color? Yeah. That's the color brown. Hua is uh, sleepy. Okay, someone who is maybe tired and sleepy, hua. And the K with a guttural, O-L-A, how do we say that? 
Very good. Kola. 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 So listen to that guttural. Okay. And the next one is. Very good. Right on. Pahi. Pahi. And the next one is. Tchalo. Tchalo. Tchalo is meat. Pahi is um, uh, porcupine. Pahi. Okay. Okay, now we get to the letter C with a guttural mark and a C with a dash above it and a C with a glottal stop. Okay, as you learn the following three new sounds, remember the sounds made by the Lakota basic and nasal vowels as well as the consonant with English sound. Uh, syllables are written in both face. Uh, repeat the following list of words after the instruct. Okay. <clears throat> the C with a dot above it represents the English CH. Ch, ch. Okay. Ch. The sound found in church church or chips chips okay so then the first word becomes what chi very good chi 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 and what's the one below it chu we chu we and the next one e chu e Echu, echu, and what about the next one? Yeah. What is it? Remember the guttural, or it's a yeah, the ch sound, the cheya, cheya, okay, cheya, and the next one is chanli. Chan Li. And the next one is Cho Cho. Okay, we're going to see when as we go down that there are other words that are spelled the same but have a different meaning, different sound. Cho Cho. And the last one is Chi. Chi. Okay. Chi is what? Remember, we do a lot of um, <coughs> we do a lot of uh, um, <coughs> conjugating. Thank you. Okay, the C with a short line above it represents the sound that is between the English G and J sound. Okay, the first one. With a C, with a dash above it, is na ja, 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 na ja, na ja. Okay. And the next one, jo, jo. Okay. Ju, ju, ju. Remember the kind of G, J sound, jo, jo. And and the next one is. Unchi, unchi, and then the the other one. G G, okay. I think some of us probably um, hear that. Maybe when we were little kids, you know, they tell us about G G. You know, maybe the spider or a bug. You know, they call it a chichi, or, or to go outside, there's chichis out there, you know. 
So some something that's scary, you know. Okay. And then the next one is E Chu. E Chu. And then the next one is E Chela. E Chela. Very good. Watch that. And the last one is Iyukchan, Iyukchan, okay? Now we're, we're at the C with the apostrophe, uh, represents a short, explosive CH sound, okay? And that C, explosive CH sound is what, the first one? E -ch -e. E -ch -e. Okay, the C H Ch -ch -ch. E -ch -e. Okay, and the next one is Cho Cho Okay, Cho Cho And then what's the next one? Very good, Me Ch E Ch U Okay, meet each two. And then the next one? Each, 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 right on. And then? Yeah, each, yeah. Yeah, each, yeah. Okay, yeah, each, yeah. Yeah, each, yeah. And then the next one? Very good, right on. That's kind of a long word. Blihemichia. Blihemichia. And the last one in that category is. Omichia. Omichia. And then it talks about <clears throat> vocabulary for the letters, uh, the three C's. Echu. Okay. She or he is doing something, okay? Mike Wawashi Echun. Echun Welo or Echun We or Echun Kshto. However, you know, um, you're making your statement. Mike is doing work. Cheya. He or she is crying. Okay, when used in a ritual setting, it becomes appealing or praying. For example, hamblecheya, to journey through the night crying or praying. Okay, ha, short for ha, happy, night. Ble is I am going, or I, I am on a journey. Cheya is crying. English interpretation vision quest. The Lakota believe that the strongest prayers are made with tears. And Chanli, I think we probably all heard the word Chanli before, right? Yeah. Is a general description for tobacco, okay? Cho Cho, okay? Cho, something is pretty or cute, okay? Debi cho welo, okay? Debi is cute. Cho cho, cute, pretty, plural, non-living being. Hampa, hampa kshupi gihena cho cho welo, or cho cho kshto. Okay, the moccasins are cute. Chochopila, plural for living being. B, remember the B? We chinchala ki hena lila chochopila, yellow or kshto. Okay, those girls are very cute.
I guess I could say that about you guys, huh? <laughs> na cha cha cha, shortened from na cha o kolakichi, a society of men selected to make final decisions or settle conflicts, literally cause each other to be loyal friends within a society or organization. Elders describe Nacha Okolakichi with the same prestige and, and um, respect allotted the U.S. Supreme Court. Today, Nacha is used to address an administrator or leader placed in a position of power by the people. Unfortunately, sometimes the term loses its respect and is used to imply the boss. Okay? So, Nacha, from a big time leadership position, um, becomes um, the boss. Unchi. Unchi, the oldest female in the Teoshpai refers to an elder woman who demonstrates wisdom, okay? Not necessarily a description of a woman with grandchildren. English interpretation, grandmother. Other reservations use Konshi instead of Unchi. Ichu, he or she is receiving something. He wawapi ea ichu welo, or ichu we, receiving uh, some letters. Mazaska ichupi ichu pelo, or ichu pikshto. Okay, they receive some money. Sometimes a family will be fortunate enough to receive some assistance in a time of need. Today it is a monetary gift. In such situation, a person will use this phrase. Okay, remember the P I B B. And the yeah becomes be, okay, and for the female. And b and yellow becomes bello in the male. Remember the b and yeah uh, becomes be female and B plus yellow bello for these ending <coughs> marks the end of a complete phrase that could be written in a full sentence by itself naha means and and is used to link two connected ideas on page 157, 157, we have a whole list of, um, of um, letters that go together and how to pronounce those letters. The BL, the GL, GM, G N M N and K S. There are nine more clusters: the K C, K P, uh, K S. When you sound them out, K J, How would you pronounce that first one? The K C. Remember, remember the diacritic marks. 
Kutcha, Kutcha, Kutcha. The case, KC, the next one, Kutcha, Kutcha, okay? And Kutcha, Kutcha, very good. Kutcha, Kutcha. And the next one, Kcha and that Kcha Kcha and Kchi the one that you were saying Kchi Kchu Kpa Kpa Kpe Kpi Kpo Kpu Kpa B. Boom. Very good. The K S. Ksha. 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 Okay. Ksha. 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 Very good. The K T. Kta. Kta. Kti. Kto. 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 And then kta. Kti. And kto. Okay, that's, that's just to practice <clears throat> how when you uh, see, see those alphabets all together, how do you sound them, okay? And it has the PC, pcha, pcha, pche, pchi, pcho. Chu, Chu, Cha, Chi, Chu, very good. Ta, 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 Okay, the TK, kta, right? Kta. And kte, kte, and tki, kti, and ktun. Okay, ktun. And the PS, psha. Pshe, pshi, pshu, 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 very good. And the H C, hcha, hcha. Next one. Hcha. Hchi, Hcho, Hcho, and Hchu, Hcha, Hchi, and Hchu. Very good. So now, now you know how to say those words, pronounce those sounds that come together. And I'm just uh, <clears throat> going through all these uh, guttural, glottal stops and all those uh, because um, you see them in, in a lot of words, a lot of phrases that we use. And so um, 
We have the G on page 82. On page 82. Often students struggle with different dif differentiating between the guttural H, the H with a dot above it, and the guttural G with a dot above it. Okay? G is a voice sound with a strong force and H is a voiceless sound. A similar distinction exists in English when the sound SSS and the ZZZ, the sound Z causes one's head and mouth to vibrate, thus creating a stronger sound known as a voice sound. Zzz, boy, my brain pretty rattled. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a voice sound, okay? The strength of a Z sound versus the softer qualities of the S's sound are parallel to the difference between guttural H and guttural G, okay? Pronouncing, okay, let's try the G. Let's try the G sound. <coughs> ri, 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 ri. And the next one is chi, chi, okay? And then the G again is re, re, okay? The G-E with a guttural. And then the H, I think we talked about that earlier. The H with the guttural is ch. Ch. How do you say the G word at the end? Ra ra. Very good. Okay. Ho <clears throat> ra. Remember, remember, I mentioned earlier. Ho ra is fish, fishing. Ha hepiki ho ra watink te lo. Ha hepiki ho ra watink te kshto. Okay, I'm going to eat fish tonight. Ho ra, fish. If used with a verb, ra will be dropped as in ho kuwa, to chase fish to go fishing, okay? Ni re, the G-E, the guttural G. Ni re, stomach area, used within the phrase ni re tchanka o kola ki the big belly society. Gha huh? means um, messed up hair, messy hair. Some of us, we get up in the morning and boy, we, Look like we've been fighting, fighting our head with our head or something. <laughs> head, hair's all messed up, big time. Hanka Rayela Kiktayelo. Sister-in-law woke up with messy hair. Okay, Khe, a mountain. Chesapa, black mountain. A description of the Black Hills. English speakers struggle to pronounce the guttural H. Consequently, Chesapa became Pahasapa. Okay. They aren't hills. They are mountains. Chesapa 
Tamanin Tamanink de Lo Hesapa Tamanink de Sto. I am going to the Black Mountains. Hua He or she is sleepy. Li la Mahua Yellow or Li la Mahuaksto. I am really sleepy. Hoch A lot of um, uh, people are male when when you they kind of make maybe a joke towards one another and they say hoch. <laughs> <laughs> but today, even the women they say hoch. <laughs> that one's for males. <laughs> that one's for male. <laughs> it says male expression for no. The word always convey a lot of feeling and is often used in reaction to teasing. Hoch hecha mushnielo. No, I didn't do that. So those are some of the things guttural. So we're going to be getting more into um, Gutturals. Oh, ha. Huh. Very good. Thank you all for coming.